Hey guys, so I had a dream last night that was really unusual and um, definitely not going to claim it's like a thus saith the Lord type of thing, but I will say that it is really, really like extremely rare for me to remember my dreams. If I remember anything, it's usually just like little snapshots or impressions like I'll wake up and be like, oh, I had a scary dream last night or whatever, but I don't remember it. But last night, um, I had a very vivid dream and I felt like it was symbolic. And I'll just tell you the dream and I'm going to read it off because I wrote it, wrote it down this morning so I won't forget, but I'm just going to read it to you. So in the dream, I was heavily pregnant. I knew the birth was soon like big old belly like I knew it was soon and I was going to the bathroom and I knew intuitively that if I just did like an extra push or like bearing down I could cause my water to break and if you're you know if you know anything about the birth process you know that the water like the the, the water it's like um it's like a membrane sac that is a protective layer of cushion around the baby and once the water breaks, it usually really kickstarts the whole labor process. So in my dream, again, this is like crazy vivid for me. I'm like bearing down a little bit and my water breaks and I can feel it gushing everywhere. Like This is so vivid. I normally do not dream like this, but so the water breaks, but then nothing happens and in the dream, it felt like there was a significant period of time that elapsed and there was no discernible signs of labor. And I think in the dream, I was even getting concerned because, you know, if the water is broken and the baby doesn't come out within a certain period of time, in, like, uh, bacteria can be introduced up the birth canal and it can be really problematic. So that was on my mind. And I, I think in the dream as I was starting to get worried about that I like the weirdest thing happened like I realized that a small opening in my upper upper abdomen had appeared and like little parts of the baby were sticking out and not like as like gross as it might sound it was just like my stomach had almost like turned into like this little like kangaroo pouch and I could see the baby and so I'm like, okay, so there's the baby. I guess the baby's coming out this way. So I pull the baby out and the baby itself looks like I took note of the fact that the baby looked really well done. Like the fingernails and the toenails were were pretty long and the baby's skin was like a very healthy like regular you know light peach color not like um like when a newborn is born usually their skin is very thin and very red and the baby looked like an older baby like it looked like it was past the point of, of where it should be born but it was just very ready to come out that was like what i had taken note of and then um i woke up and as I woke up and I was thinking about this, I was immediately thinking of a couple passages from Isaiah. And I just want to share it's Isaiah 66, 7, firstly, and it says, Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pains come upon her, she delivers a son. And then in Isaiah 66, 9, it says, Do I bring to the moment of birth and not give delivery? I'm getting a little emotional. I just think this is so cool. Says the Lord, Do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery? Says your God. And um, wow, I just think that the dream just seemed really prophetic because it the baby it was clearly time for the baby to be born 
but it seemed like the labor had been stalling and then all of a sudden this opening appears and this, the baby is delivered instantly and painlessly. And I just think that is such a cool picture of maybe us as the bride of Christ being saved from the, uh, the extreme birth pangs that are going to come on the world as the Lord is, um, you know, waking up the Jewish people and um, punishing the wicked of the earth and all of that. Like, we're going to be delivered in an instant and uh, the Lord is not going to bring us to the point of birth and then just stop. And that was encouraging to me and I thought I should share it because I'm sure it'll be encouraging to you guys too because, you know, a lot of us have been watching and waiting for a long time and I know that there's a lot of hype this week and there is no reason not to be excited, but just in case this week passes and we're still here, we still see very much the time is drawing closer. There's no going back from here. It's going to happen. And I really feel like this dream was the Lord confirming it to me that, um, this baby is, you know, this whole thing is ripe and uh, he is going to cause it to happen. I know he's not going to abandon us, abandon us here. And I also just wanted to give you guys some peace of mind. I know that one of the ways that the enemy likes to torment us is to get us to doubt our salvation or even whether or not we're going to go in the rapture and it really doesn't help that there's a lot of people out there preaching a partial rapture where like claiming that the body of Christ and the, the bride of Christ are two different things and guys that's just not true because the Bible says that all who have the Spirit of God are the sons of God sorry I'm paraphrasing but if you have the indwelling Holy Spirit, you have the seal of God on you, you belong to him and he is not going to leave you here. So you can put that to rest. And I was also just thinking, because I had gotten into a debate with someone who was more of like a works-based Christian. And I was thinking about it later and I just felt like the Holy Spirit was bringing a couple of verses to my mind. You know, if for nothing else to give us more just peace of mind about how we are saved. And in Matthew 22, Jesus told the people a parable about a wedding feast. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to call those he had invited to the banquet, but they refused to come. Again, he sent other servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I have already prepared my dinner. And it just goes on to describe its dinner or how he has prepared this elaborate dinner for this wedding banquet, but they don't pay any attention to the servants. And in some cases, they, they seize them, mistreat them, or even kill the servants who are trying to spread the good news, right? Um, so eventually, the wedding banquet is ready. And he says, but those I invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, to the crossroads and invite to the banquet as many as you can find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered everyone they could find, both evil and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But then the king came in to see the guests. He spotted a man who was not dressed in wedding clothes. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? But the man was speechless. Then the king told the servants, tie him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called and few are chosen and you know for um when i first read 
that passage, I didn't know what it meant. Like, why would Jesus invite everyone and anyone into the wedding banquet, but single out this one guy because he didn't have on the proper wedding clothes? And then it clicked to me through the Holy Spirit that the wedding clothes here, it just symbolizes us being clothed with the Lord Jesus. Like in Romans 13, 14, it says, instead, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. And I feel like that's so important because there's so many people that are trying to earn their own righteousness, that are trying to make themselves worthy. And the Bible says that we first have to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think a big part of that is the indwelling Holy Spirit. And then we can make no provision for the desires of the flesh. And that's the only way we're going to be able to do that. And then it goes and it says in Galatians 3, 26 to 27, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. So we believe in the Lord and we trust him 100% for our salvation. And that is our, that, that's it. And he puts his spirit in us and he keeps working on us in that sanctification process but no matter where we are along that process we're still his child and we just need to remember that so when the enemy does come in or we hear false teaching we can rest assured that our salvation is in Christ alone we are saved by grace through faith period um, so anyways guys I, along with many of you, am really hopeful that this could be it, that even if it is not this week, we will, we will continue to look up, we will continue to wait for our blessed hope, but I do hope and pray that this encouraged you guys. Bye.